Hey Stock Explorers listeners and welcome back for another deep dive. You know we love to unpack these companies and today we're talking about BlackBerry. Uh, Remember those phones? Yeah. The ones with the keyboard? Well, it turns out they've kind of traded in the keyboard for cybersecurity and the Internet of Things. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating how they've transformed themselves, not just dabbling in these areas either. They're all in, especially when it comes to the automotive sector. Well, for this deep dive, we've got a ton of information to go through. Earnings calls, press releases, investor presentations. And our goal today is to really figure out, can BlackBerry pull off this comeback? I mean, they sold off Silence recently. So can they really compete with these big players in this new space? I guess that's what we're here to find out. Absolutely. And I think a good place to start is with their recent financials. For the first time in 12 quarters, BlackBerry has reported both profitability and positive cash flow. We're talking a $34 million year-over-year -year improvement in operating cash flow. Okay, so that's not nothing. And get this, all three of their divisions, cybersecurity, IoT, and licensing, they were all profitable in Q3 2025. Cybersecurity brought in $8 million in EBITDA. Secure Communications, excluding Silence, brought in $22 million. IoT brought in $18 million. And Licensing brought in $6 million. So they're not just surviving. It seems like they're actually thriving. Yeah, you could say that. But I think the real gem here, the real star of the show, is their IoT division, specifically their QNX software. Now, this is what's powering all those digital cockpits you see in cars, and even some of the driver assistance systems, the ADS systems that are pretty much standard in new cars these days. Wait a minute, so you're telling me my car probably has BlackBerry software in it. I have no <laughs> idea. So how many cars are using this software? Well, over 255 million worldwide are running on QNX. It's not just a fancy interface. It's really the brains behind some pretty critical car functions, and they're not stopping there. They just launched QNX SDP 8.0. That's their next-gen operating system. And it already has support for more than 10 leading silicon vendors. So it's not like they're just playing in the automotive space. They're really shaping it. This isn't just some little side project for them. It seems like a pretty big part of their strategy. It absolutely is. And the numbers prove it. Their QNX royalty backlog sits at a pretty impressive $815 million. That shows you the long-term revenue potential here. They're not betting on some fleeting trend. This is the future of mobility. Okay, so that sounds pretty promising. But I got to ask about something that seems kind of strange to me. They sold off Silence, their endpoint security business, mm -hmm. to Arctic Wolf. And that was a big chunk of their cybersecurity portfolio. Didn't they kind of shoot themselves in the foot there? Well, it might seem counterintuitive, but this was a strategic move. They wanted to shed a division that was really demanding a lot of investment. And they think this will free up some resources so they can really focus on their core strengths. Okay, so it makes sense from that perspective. And plus, they're holding on to some pretty valuable tax losses from that deal. I think their CFO said it was well into the hundreds of millions. That's right. Those tax losses could actually act as a shield for future U.S. profits. It's a smart financial move, one that could really boost their bottom line. Okay, so Silence is out. But what about the remaining cybersecurity division? Secure communications. That's the one focused on secure communication and endpoint management, right? Exactly. For government and enterprise customers. And how's that division doing? It's doing really well, actually. Their dollar-based net retention rate, or DBNRR, hit 95% in Q3 2025. That shows you their strong customer loyalty there. And it's a good sign for future growth. They're not just keeping their existing customers. They're expanding those relationships. And what kind of customers are we talking about? Are they landing those big contracts? Or is yep. this more of a small business thing? No, they're playing in the big leagues. Their BlackBerry UEM, which stands for Unified Endpoint Management, is securing renewals and expansions with some big names. Global banks, government institutions. These aren't your average clients. Wow. So they're going after the Fort Knox of data security. High stakes but huge potential rewards. Exactly, and their ad hoc critical event management solution is gaining traction too, especially with that upcoming FedRAMP high authorization. This could really put them in a leading position. Within the US federal government, that's a market that demands the very best when it comes to security and reliability. Yeah, absolutely. And we can't forget about SecuSuite either, their encrypted voice and data solution, which seems to be doing pretty well in the German market. It sounds like all of this is pointing to a Secure Communications ARR, Annual Recurring Revenue. That's on a steady climb, reaching $215 million in Q3 2025. You got it. What we're seeing here is a really deliberate shift away from that volatility of the consumer tech market and towards something more stable, something potentially more profitable, enterprise and government security and embedded systems. It's a calculated risk for sure, 
But so far, it seems to be paying off. So they're trading smartphones for smart cars and smart security solutions. But is this a path back to the top, or are they just chasing the latest tech trends? Well, that is the million-dollar question, isn't it? Secure Communications is providing that steady stream of revenue. But QNX, that's the potential game changer. All right, so we've got a company shedding its old skin, mm -hmm. embracing a bold new vision. But can they actually pull it off? We'll dig into that a little bit more when we come back. Stay with us, Stock Explorers. So before the break, we were talking about QNX and how it could be a real game changer for BlackBerry. It's in over 255 million vehicles worldwide, which is mind blowing to me. But the automotive world is changing so quickly these days. Where does QNX fit into all of this? It's a fast paced world for sure. We're talking software defined vehicles, electric vehicles, yeah. and this push for autonomous driving and QNX is right in the middle of it all. So it's not just about having a fancy touchscreen in your car anymore? No, not at all. We're talking about the core systems, the systems that control safety features, the powertrain, even how the car connects to everything else. So QNX is like the brains of the car. And those brains are getting more complex all the time. Exactly. And that's where QNX has a real advantage. Automakers need a platform they can trust, a platform that can handle all this complexity. And QNX has that proven track record. I mean, it has to be rock solid. We're talking about software that's driving millions of cars around the world. And the stakes are high. Imagine a software glitch that causes a car to suddenly brake or swerve off the road. This isn't like your computer crashing. People's lives are at stake. Exactly. QNX needs to be as dependable as the software used in an airplane or in a hospital. It sounds like they've really found their niche. While other companies are chasing headlines, BlackBerry is quietly powering some of the most important technology in our lives. We're building the foundation for the future of mobility. And for investors. That stability and long-term vision can be pretty appealing. Especially compared to chasing the latest fads. So BlackBerry's betting on trends that are here to stay. Trends that have the potential to grow for years to come. But can they actually pull this off? Can they really reclaim their spot as a tech powerhouse? I mean, we've seen them struggle before. They have had their ups and downs, but let's look at what's happening. They're profitable again. They've got a strong position in a high growth market, and they're streamlining their business by getting rid of things that aren't core to their strategy, like selling off silence. And they're attracting some top talent, forming strategic partnerships. Didn't they just announce something with QNX, Vector, and TT Tech Auto? They did. They're not just playing the game. They're shaping the future of the automotive industry. They're building the software platform that the next generation of vehicles will be built on. This is a very different BlackBerry than the one that was struggling to keep up with the smartphone revolution. It shows you that they're willing to adapt, to innovate, even when they're facing challenges. But let's be real. No investment is without risk. What could go wrong here? What are some of the things that could trip BlackBerry up? Well, technology changes fast and the competition is fierce. There's always the chance that some new technology pops up, something that makes QNX obsolete. That's a scary thought. What if someone comes up with a better system, a cheaper system? It's a valid concern, but BlackBerry has shown us that they can adapt. Remember, they were once the kings of mobile communication. They fell behind, but now they're back. So they've got this resilience, this capacity to innovate, they're not afraid to make big moves. Selling silence was a tough decision, but it lets them focus on their strengths, embedded systems and secure communications. It seems like there are some big risks here, but also some really big potential rewards. If they can execute on their strategy, they could be a major player in the future of connected devices and not just cars. Critical infrastructure, industrial automation, healthcare, the possibilities are endless. So for investors looking to get into the Internet of Things, BlackBerry might be a company worth looking at. It's about more than just the technology, though. It's about execution. Can they manage this transition? Can they integrate their acquisitions? Can they scale their operations to meet the growing demand? Those are some key questions. And since we're talking about acquisitions, how are they planning to use all that money from the silence sale? They've said they're going to focus on strengthening their balance sheet and reinvesting in the business. So paying down debt, buying back stock, maybe even making some strategic acquisitions. All of the above. Those are the decisions that will determine their long-term success. Do they go for the short-term gains? Or I... do they make the investments they need to really capitalize on these opportunities? Yeah, it's a tough call. And there's always that risk of dilution too, right? If they issue more stock to raise capital. That's true. It's definitely a possibility. 
But the silent sale brought in a good chunk of change. They've got options. It all depends on what their priorities are. So it sounds like there's a lot to be optimistic about. But there are some real risks, too. It feels like BlackBerry's story is still being written. What should investors be watching for? in the next few months? Well, I think it's important to see how they use that money from the Silence sale. Are they making smart acquisitions? Acquisitions that really complement their strengths? Are they investing in R&D? To stay ahead of the game, those are the things that will show us how serious they are about this new direction. And what about the competition? They're not the only ones in this space. Can they really compete with these big tech companies? They're definitely going up against some tough competition, but they've got something the others don't. A reputation for security, and reliability. And in a world where data breaches and cyber attacks are happening all the time, that's a big deal. It's funny. They've gone from being the cool kids on the block to the reliable ones. Yeah. The ones everyone depends on. Exactly. And that reliability could be what makes them successful in the long run. So for all of you stock explorers out there, keep an eye on BlackBerry. They've stumbled before, but they've also proven that they can adapt that they can reinvent themselves. They might not be the flashy tech company they used to be, but they're building something important, something with the potential to change the world. Well, that's it for our deep dive into BlackBerry. Hopefully you learned something new today. And maybe you're even feeling a little inspired. Remember, sometimes the best investments are the companies that are willing to take risks, the ones that are charting a new course. We always appreciate you joining us on this journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next deep dive. Until then, happy investing.